Okay, so we've just finished doing our bootstrap and the next section is to create some tests. But before we do that, I just want to show you what's actually been downloaded. So I've downloaded the, the full tests directory from the server and also this Codeception YAML file is created. So one thing to be aware of is the output directory. You may not have this downloaded. If you're following along and you do a download um, and you get this tests folder, you might find that the output directory is not there. As you can see, it contains a git ignore file. Um, depending on how your system's configured, git ignore files will be seen as hidden files and empty directories will not be downloaded. So because that's a hidden file, this will show as an empty directory and PHP Storm by default doesn't download empty directories. So to get around that, you need to go into tools, deployment, configuration and advanced options, show and process hidden files, make sure that's ticked. You also need to go into tools, deployment, options and tick create empty directories. By doing that, you will get around the that problem of not having that directory. It's not a big deal, honestly, but because effectively once you start running the tests, this directory will fill up and then the next time you do a full download of the tests folder, you will get that directory. But just so you're aware, um, that's how you get it. Anyway, let's have a look at what's created by default. So if we look through, just open up all of these and then we'll also open up the Codeception YAML file because this is kind of like the, the master config. So by default, we now in code section two have reverted to this tester um, actor. So if you're not unsure of this, if you've ever used code section 1.x, um, you will probably have come across the terminology of guys. Um, so you could have like code guy or uh, acceptance guy, or you could even have other, you could name it whatever you wanted. You could even have like code code ninja or code girl or whatever you could have whatever you wanted now they've standardized it as tester so all of these tests are going to be run by functional tester acceptance tester unit tester if you add another one in say an api tester then effectively it's just standardizing it then we tell it which paths our directory sorry our code section um structure is going to work from got the tests as the root which does that then the log so in here there isn't a log anymore it's been renamed to output now the reason being in code section one um everything used to get written to the log directory regardless of whether it was actually a log or not so they've kind of renamed it to be more generic to just be output but they've kept the old log path there um a little bit confusing that i suppose but if you know the sort of the backstory to code section you you understand why they've done it like that but yeah for new users it's a little bit confusing because effectively it's not just logs that are going in there but logs do go in there as well so yeah um so you've got your data your data is actually a sql dump by default there's nothing in it um but what you would do with that quite cool what you do is you create a sort of standard database let's say for example in that database you've got a users table you could create the database so that it's got a users table with three users in there by default and whenever you load the tests that database will always get reloaded as you can even do it like basically before every test is run that database is reloaded and then you can do stuff like delete a user and then count the amount of users and see that there's like two users now um it's really cool because effectively you can always have that database exactly as you expect it to be so you can query and stuff against it and make sure that the expectations are met depending on the criteria in your tests again if you're thinking chris what the hell are you talking about that sounds like madness then don't worry because obviously we're, this is early days and i will cover it in a lot more detail um so yeah then we've got the settings you generally don't tend to mess around with that the only thing that you might do is up the memory limit if your tests are running incredibly slowly. And then we have the config for actually configuring that um, that data path there. So what this is doing is just telling your code section how to reload that database, like what are the settings. This DSN syntax is a little bit um, funky, so we'll cover that. And then just the standard username and password. Effectively, what we're going to put in there is the IP address for the server, but the syntax is a little bit bit odd 
and then yes yeah, so we've got these the output directory which we've covered the support directory this used to be called the helper directory underscore helpers or uh, i think it was underscore helpers plural um and then in there you could have various different things which allow you to effectively change or modify code section to be able to do additional stuff so now everything's been put into this helpers direct uh, sorry this <laughs> this support directory even though the helpers files are still there it's more generic in the same way that the output directory is more generic so that you can just put any sort of support related files in there don't worry about that at this point and you've got the standard file uh, folder structure for the different test environments that we created we've got the acceptance the functional the unit which we've already sort of covered in the introduction modules depending on the tests that you're making you put the the files into those folders so if it's a unit test it obviously goes in the unit test directory and likewise and then you've got the actual configs for those different environments so you can use different modules and, and so on um with different configurations depending on the type of test that you're running and again you can add other types of test environments so like api tests can also go in here with other configs because like your api would probably go off to a different url to your front end tests for example so it's, it's just cool to be able to do stuff like that so that's pretty much the directory structure as i say um, the next step in this is to create some tests so we will be doing that in the next video